Performing univariate analysis or bivariate analysis is easy. For univariate, you would have a line of points and for bivariate, you would have a 2D plot. In fact, for 3D plot as well, you would add another dimension and you can think of a room full of balls, let's say. So things start getting complex when you have four or more dimensions. Now the human brain cannot comprehend these many dimensions at the same time. Now think that you have 100,000 rows in your data set and you have maybe thousands of columns in your data set. How would you comprehend that sort of complexity? Now, this is where we start talking about dimensionality reduction techniques. Hello everyone, my name is Harshit Tyagi and in this particular video, we are going to talk about one such dimensionality reduction technique, which is called principal component analysis. So I'll give you an intuitive understanding of how PCA works without talking about the mathematics behind it. So let's try to understand how PCA works using this very simple example. So here we talk about principal component analysis or PCA. Now PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique. We can use PCA to transform a large set of variables into a smaller set whilst preserving as much information as possible. Or you can say that we try to capture the essence of data with fewer variables. Now, you must be wondering why do we actually need to reduce the dimensions? So there are a couple of reasons for that. Now, the first thing is with fewer dimensions, it makes your work easier. You cannot probably comprehend working with thousands of variables, but if you can reduce it to a couple of hundreds, then it makes your work easier. Second reason is that you reduce noise in the data. That is dimensions which add little explanation to the underlying data. You can get rid of those sort of dimensions. Similarly, we have a third reason, which is it is easier to visualize the data. So you can plot 2D, 3D data sets, but let's say if you have more than a couple of hundreds, it becomes a very difficult task to visualize what the data actually looks like. So with fewer dimensions, it is easier to visualize as well. So now let's try to understand how PCA can help us in reducing the dimensionality of the data. So how does this work? So for this explanation, let me use a two dimensional data, which is easier to understand. And then we can scale our understanding to more number of variables as well. So let's say we have data of a few people. We have their height and their weight. So HT here denotes height and WT denotes weight. So let's say we have a few data points and if we plot them here, on a 2D plot, a scatter plot basically. Let's say on the X axis we have weight, on the Y we have height. This is what let's say our data set actually looks like. Now, for this data set, we have this two dimensional data. Now, to reduce the dimensionality of a 2D data, where can we go? We can only make it one dimension. So, the goal for PCA here would be that we want to reduce the dimensionality from two to one. We are using this very simple example so that it becomes easier to understand and then we can basically talk more about 3D, 4D, 5D, 100D, 1000D, so on and so forth. All right, so one solution that comes to mind when I want to reduce the dimensionality of this data set is I can, let's say, get rid of my weight variable. So if I get rid of this weight variable, I only have one dimension left, which is height. So what would that data look like? So converting a 2D data into 1D is basically going to give you a line of points. So if you get rid of weight and map all these values to let's say Y axis. So your data would actually become this line of point all on the Y axis. So all of this data, all of these points are going to be mapped on this particular line. And this is going to be your data, a simple line of points. Now, this is one way. Another way could be that you get rid of this dimension height and you only keep 
weight so if you only keep weight then your points are going to be mapped to let's say this particular axis and you would have data in this line of points as per the weight dimension and you are getting rid of height now the problem with this particular solution getting rid of one of the dimension or one of the variables is that you have lost all the information from one dimension but we want to keep as much information as possible so how can we reduce dimension in the most efficient way and this is where pca comes into the picture so let's see how pca actually solves this problem so again i am plotting weight height this is our data now first thing that pca does is first step is calculate the mean in the data mean point in data so this is the first step that pca would do so let's say your mean lies somewhere over here denoted by x now pca what it would do is the second step is it will try to plot a line that passes through this particular mean point now there would be multiple lines passing through this point so pca essentially wants to find the line that best fits this data or in other words you can say so let's say if this is one line what you would do is you will calculate the distance you will map all of these points to this particular line and then you basically calculate the sum of all of these distances and you want to minimize that distance from all the points to this particular line now this line is basically a combination of both height and weight and this new dimension is called principal component 1 now the best possible line is going to minimize the distance from all the points so pca essentially would find a line that passes through the main point and minimizes the distance minimizes the distance from all points in the data set so this is what pca does so this new dimension the first principal component is basically going to give you the best possible line that minimizes the distance now when you map all of your data points to this particular line you would get a plot which looks something like this and let's say this is the point this is the line all the points over here so your data point would actually be lying on this particular principal component which is your pc1 now this line of points basically represents all the original points on a new dimension which is principal component one and it represents not just weight or the height but a combination of the two and more than that it is the combination that best represents the variance in the data you can see the spread of the data and it helps us preserve as much information as possible when we reduce the weight and height to one single dimension and if you plot if you draw another line which is at the right angle to this principal component one you basically have a new dimension which is called principal component two now you can only have as many new dimension as the original number of variables in your data so here we had 2d data so we can only create two new dimensions but the goal is to reduce the dimensionality so here we would just stick with principal component one that best represents the data or the variance in the data now if we rotate these set of points so here this is what the data is with weight on the x-axis and height on the y-axis so now if we rotate these points to the horizontal and we can compare the spread of points with the spread for just the weight and height so here you can see that uh, if i simply just keep weight so the spread would be somewhat in this particular range so here i would just map all of these values so these would be values and the spread would be somewhere over here so let's say this is my weight so on the horizontal axis this would 
be the spread of points for weight and similarly for height as well this is going to be the range and there would be points here so if we rotate it horizontally so this is going to be somewhat you know narrower than weight because the range is small so the spread of the data is less as compared to weight but now if we compare it with our first principal component the new dimension now this is along the diagonal as we, we can see so all of these points would actually map over here and for pc1 if we rotate these points to the line uh, and plot it horizontally this would give us a spread somewhat like this which is way more than the original variables weight or height so principal component one is that axis that spans the most variation in the data and then if you want to look at principal component two which is this orthogonal line to pc1 so this is the axis that spans the second most variation in the data so this would be somewhere over here and you can basically learn that because this is going to be the range this is going to be the range of all the values so all the values would map over here to this line let me just denote it with red so yeah you can see all of these points are going to be somewhere over here in this line and if you turn it or rotate it horizontally this would be the variation explained by principal component 2 so this is our pc2 so you can see that how pc1 the first principal component explains or represents the most variation in the data now one thing that we should try to understand over here is what pca has done so is it just that PC has rotated our data point so again let's quickly plot the data so this is my original data now PC1 and PC2 let's say these are these so if I have PC1 and PC2 so let's create a plot this is PC1 this is PC2 now if we rotate this data set our data set would actually look something like this for this particular plot some values above pc1 some values below pc1 so this is our rotated the new data point so looking at these two plots you would see that it kind of looks like we have just rotated the data now comparing these two plots you will feel that all we have actually done is find the optimal way to rotate our original data so that most of the variance or the spread is captured on the horizontal axis which is principal component one and here in this particular image here you can see it's just a rotation of the first image which represents our original data now this is not to say that pca is to rotate the data but by rotating it in this way we can derive new variables which are called principal components and in fact because our aim is dimensionality reduction we don't particularly want to keep all the principal components we just want to choose the first few the ones that preserve enough of the information in the data to proceed with our further analysis so here we had 2d data so we'll stick with 1d so we'll probably just keep principal component 1 and discard principal component 2 if you had 3d you might keep 2 or 1 so 4d you might have three two one so similarly you can scale it to 100 d to 1000 d to 10,000 d the math behind pca the math behind pca would still work although it would be very difficult for us to visualize it going above four or more dimensions but we rely on mathematics and that is why pca works out really well when you have uh, more than hundreds of variables that you want to reduce so this is what the essence of pca is this is basically the benefit of using pca is so that was all about principal component analysis and there is a lot of mathematics that actually drives this particular algorithm if you want to study deeper you can learn linear algebra refresh 
all the basic concepts and then you would want to dive into eigenvectors, eigenvalues, singular value decomposition. That actually is the crux of PCA. Now you would ask where is PCA applied in the industry? Why are we even studying it? So PCA is being applied in biomedical industry for drug discovery programs, healthcare industry, fintech, customer profiling, image compression. So there are all sorts of areas of application where PCA is being used in these days. So I hope this video was helpful for you. And if it was, please give it a thumbs up, uh, share it with your fellows, friends, colleagues, and uh, yeah, subscribe to our channel and help us grow. I'll catch you in the next one.